all I am saying is it is rude, unbecoming, and frankly demeaning to the noble animal that is the domesticated sheep. Now, I have wood. Does anybody have any sheep to trade? Hey everyone, Jack from the Cardboard Herald here. Rob and Juno asks, hey, what are some games that I can play when I'm kind of beyond Catan? Well, that's a great question because why are you beyond Catan? Is it that you love it, but you're looking for a little bit more or maybe you're just looking for something entirely different? I can't think of a perfect list of games that are going to work for everyone here, but I can think of some good follow-ups that if Catan has been your main entry point into board gaming and you need just to explore, here are three great options and some reasons why I think you should check them out. The first game I'm going to recommend is Pandemic, designed by Matt Leacock. This is the number one game that people tend to think about when they think about cooperative games, and for good reason. It's not the first cooperative game, but it is probably the most approachable, certainly the most monumental game that popularized the entire genre in this hobby. There are a couple reasons why. First off, it has an incredibly approachable theme. You and your friends are trying to fight diseases that are ravaging the globe. You'll globe trot around treating these diseases in individual cities while simultaneously working to find a cure before the clock runs out and the world is doomed. One of the reasons why I think that you should check this out is that maybe you've had the robber put on you too many times, or maybe you have some friends that you want to play board games, but they're kind of leery about the whole looking like an idiot because they lose type of thing. Well, first off, you should try to convince them that it's about playing and having fun and not always about winning and that losing is okay too. That's totally cool. But in pandemic, <laughs> it's just as much fun to lose as it is to win because you and your friends get to work together. You get to strategize together. You get to face off against the board together and you get to celebrate in your victory together. It is very, very satisfying to win a game of Pandemic, especially when you're just teetering on the edge of losing. It has a lot of great content that's come out after it in order to support it, and it is by far one of the most approachable games that you can use to move beyond Catan into a whole new genre or to use as its own style of gateway game for friends who weren't otherwise into board games. The second recommendation that I'm going to make is for Kingdom Builder. Now, Kingdom Builder is still one of my favorite games in my collection. If you like putting houses onto a board, little tiny wooden houses, onto little tiny hex grids and getting points for them, well, then this is kind of up your alley. There's several different terrain types. Yeah, that sounds like Catan so far. I already mentioned the hexes. I already mentioned the little houses. And you know what? You get points for those little settlements. That seems somewhat familiar, right? Except that this game completely subverts everything else that you'd expect out of Catan because you are getting points in crazy ways and you are meaningfully putting many, 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 many houses on the board. You got like 40 of them every game. See, the way it works is that on your turn, you get one, just one card depicting a terrain type, and you must put three settlements on to terrain that matches your card. The trick is, and the thing that drives the entire game is that it must be adjacent if possible, which creates really interesting situations where you are trying to make sure that you are not adjacent so that way you can spread across the board like so many dandelion seeds. The reason why you might want to do that is because at the beginning of the game, before anything else starts, you draw three scoring condition cards and each of them have a different way that your settlements will score points. Maybe your settlements score one point if they are next to a mountain or water. Or maybe they'll score points if they connect two special areas on the board together and there's special areas throughout each of the four different mats that make up the player board. Or maybe they are going to count each individual grouping of settlements as something. Furthermore, there's a little bit more depth to it when you add that each of the four quadrants that make up your player board 
are reversible, first off, you can rotate them around. Second is that each of them present a special power, something unique that will only be present if that mat is in the game. And if you build next to that special power, it gives you a little way to break the game. Maybe it adds an extra settlement on whatever your resource card type is every turn. Or maybe it allows you to pick up existing settlements and move them onto water adjacent, if possible. There are many different powers. There are many different scoring condition cards. And this game is one of the most versatile games right out of the box that I've ever played. No two games are alike, and it's something that I've found that even beginning gamers as well as real veteran gamers still get a lot of enjoyment out of. I really like Kingdom Builder. The last game I'm going to recommend is a game for those of us who played Catan and said, I like this, but I want more. I want more strategic out of my game. I want more depth, and that is where Concordia comes into play. Concordia is one of the best games about trading in the Mediterranean that you're going to find. If you want to take settlements and put them on the board in order to get resources, in order to build more settlements, in order to get more resources, then this is a game for you. And it is somehow feeling like Catan while being actually completely different. What is so compelling about this game is that you get to have a hand of cards where each card is going to dictate what you do on your turn. You say, I am resolving this card this turn. It goes in my discard pile and I do whatever it says. Maybe it allows you to make some transactions to get some additional resources or sell some of your resources. Maybe it lets you move around the board and build some extra settlements. Maybe it allows you to purchase new cards that get to be added to your hand that you can use as different actions every turn. Or maybe it's the card that allows you to pick up all the cards in your discard pile, allowing you to play them all again. You will be making meaningful decision after meaningful decision every turn, but it's never so complicated or nebulous that you won't know what to do next. It always feels like there's a handful of good decisions available to you, and you'll want to take them all. Unfortunately, you can't, and that's what makes a good game, is one that you feel like you you know what some of the viable options are available to you, you know what the repercussions are going to be, and you make cool decisions that you can see the long-term effects of as you play the game. I really love this game. One other really cool thing about it, because I'm, I can gush about these things, it's my video, so I can do that, is that the cards that you buy and the cards that you start the game with each are multipliers for a different point scoring condition at the end of the game. It's not like Kingdom Builder, which I mentioned earlier, where you have uh, a, a series of these set out at the start of the game and everyone scores points based off of them. No, these are your personal point scores. So they might say like this card gives you points for every region you occupy at the end of the game. Well, if you've occupied 10 regions, you're going to want to buy lots of those cards. Not only does the ability give you more options, but you're going to get lots of points out of that. Maybe this is sounding like it's a little bit out of your league. And you know what? If you like Tan and you feel like you have a good grasp on it, I see no reason why you shouldn't at least consider moving into a slightly heavier game and giving it a shot. And that is Concordia. I believe in you. So what do you think of my recommendations? Do you have some games of your own that you think people should explore into once they are beyond Catan? The next steps that they should boldly take as they make on their board gaming journey. Do you completely disagree with me? I want to hear your argument. Let me know in the comments below. Now you can find all kinds of other stuff by the Cardboard Herald, by me, by other associates that we have doing stuff at www.cardboardherald.com. Be sure to do all the social media stuff, like, subscribe, find us on Twitter at Cardboard Herald. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald, and you keep on gaming.